Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this service is a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And find our inner Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or reverse, Jay-Z and fucking Beyonce. You see this foolishness with fake concerts, new singles? What's going on? What fake concert? It was, I guess it was on Ticketmaster. I don't know if someone photoshopped it or somebody actually had this on Ticketmaster. It was like a Jay-Z. It was like on the run too. Yeah, I and thought that like was real. That, nigga, that ain't real. No, it ain't there no more. I have seen I mean, maybe Instagrams. they Maybe they are going to do it, but I don't think it was supposed to be released the day it was released. Oh. <laughs> and they said, not today. We done gave you this little sad ass single. I'm sure Nero going to talk about, you know, he be the music guru. And, and that's what mom's doing. And P.S. She's posting more. She's getting snatched. She's getting ready for Coachella. Um, I would say she could take my money, but I'm not, no, I'm being fiscally sound this year. Um, Beyonce cannot have any of my money. Beyonce cannot have more than twenty four dollars from me. Twenty four. Yeah, so I'm not seeing her in concert. I'm not, you know, I'll buy a CD or a download. I, I can't. I cannot participate in Beyonce concerts this year. Okay. I do not have four hundred dollars to give Queen Beyonce. Understandable at, at all. So her and Jay Z can play up the fuck that they want. I still ain't see. Have we seen the twins? No. Wait, have we not from them? Have we seen them? Yes. They I mean, as of late, how old is they? Thirty three. I seen them on Instagram. Lately? No, how not old lately. is they? Not lately. I, I feel like I don't even know how old they is. I've seen Blue a lot lately, though. Because she's living fucking life, wouldn't you? Blue ain't been at the All Star game. She done been everywhere, honey. Yeah. She done went to Wakanda. She done w- went to a wrinkle inside. <laughs> Let me stop. But I was just like, Lord, they releasing most stuff. But Beyonce got something stern. It's about that time. Yeah, Look like she done got bored. <laughs> you know, time what? to time to get with these bitches quickly. I need to talk to Beyonce's uh, Instagram strategist. Yeah, to figure out why they they be posting in threes. I they guess just, it's godly, honey. I don't know. They just be whenever they post it's always in threes. I whenever I get the that. well, I'll i you know, I get the not- notifications. Oh, I don't have no notifications on nothing I have. You know, I gotta stay up on it. I only want only notified I want from the Lord. Oh. Um, who is you? <laughs> I'm near. And I'm Nayambi. <laughs> <laughs> and this is episode one twelve. One twelve. Ruin Peaches and Cream. Oh my goodness. All right, be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rate and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. <laughs> To the bad boy concert was that last year or was that two years ago that was remember the bad boy year. reunion yeah i can't remember if 112 was good or not was it good i don't can't remember if it was like their song or if they had a good performance i can't remember i can't remember but they do got some hits mm-hmm. but it's something about what's that boy slim with the high voice mm-hmm. something about that yodeling he do that just okay uh kills me. i'd be like all right it's like he too old to be yodeling like that one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. Hello. Follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. Remember, that's black with no K. Do you know what I'm talking about? That yodel he do? Yeah. He was, oh. Oh. It did, oh, he was you know, I think it was the Breakfast Club though. They're talking about Slim ain't Slim no more. Yeah, they, they was hating. <laughs> Slim did get a little weight on Ain't no grown man weight. <laughs> well, nice ain't no wrong with grown man weight. Man should be pudgy. Don't do that to him. He not punch. I think he was just so used to him being thin that when he uh, uh, probably a normal weight that we like. Ooh, mm-hmm. but we sound like somebody's grandma. Don't you? Don't, old people always tell you when you're some shit going left. Yeah, they sure will. Now when you're looking good, they don't say nothing. They act like they don't see you. You're no, invisible. They act like you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, black is a whisper. You lose too much weight too much quick. You got the, um, you got AIDS. You got can't. You got some type, or you on that shit. Well, I remember. You just can't work out. I'll leave the story for another day. What? Somebody asked me if you were sick. If you what? Were sick. Who asked me? You. No comment. Who asked you? <laughs> no comment. Oh, what they say, Nero? <laughs> they said, Nero got something very personal to ask you. Very, very personal. And they, they got real close to me. What? And I said, what, what's going on? Yeah. It's not going to be sick. What? They start whispering. You said, no, I think she's healthy, actually. She was maybe sick a year ago. Is Nyambi sick? Yeah. Said what? Yeah. Nyambi, is she sick? Yeah. Who? No. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Nyambi, your, your woman. Yeah, no. No, she ain't sick. Well, she ain't lost all that weight. And I ain't seen her. And then when I did see her, she lost all that weight. I love myself. I said, no, Nyambi ain't sick. She just lost that weight. And I found it. Oh. <laughs> My check in. 
God. Um, the Oscars. I ain't watch it. I knew I wasn't going to watch it. I'm just not interested in the Oscars or the, or the Grammys, honestly. Mm-hmm. Nothing about it. Even like when I know when we're supposed to watch it and the, the boy, I can't do it. It's just a boring show. Mm-hmm. The host be whack. The um, actors come up on there with near on speech impediment and be trying to give up them awards. Like, it's just too much. Was that shade? What? To, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Was like, it to me? They be like, in the, um, I'm like, oh, sit down. Just roll it across the screen. Was that shade to me? And then always the musical performances be whack. Like, well, I guess this year was pretty good because Miguel, y'all remember Coco I was talking about? Mm hmm. He still doesn't remember me. Coco Bang. I, mean, I think I'm going to have to buy that movie. I didn't even know Miguel Singh remember me. Oh. But it, not, it, made, my, it made me remember my, Grandma Coco. It made me want to cry again. Anywho, um, congratulations to Jordan Peele for winning the original screenplay. Shout out to him. He should have won more. Um, I should have won a lot more. We, You know, we won a few awards. We shouldn't have probably won the ones we did. Can we talk about this Shape of Water? Did Black Panther win any? Sir, that's not this year. We have to wait till next year. And they usually put it this late in the year, so we probably going to forget. That's why they should go ahead and win now. <laughs> Nigga, that ain't <laughs> <laughs> Nigga shit. <laughs> the Shape of Water. That's what's the crazy part to me. Like That's the, actually the other movie I watched on the plane. I couldn't think of. It was that unmemorable. Because um, I was like, because I knew that it was nominated for all It was nominated for what, the most Oscars. I, is that my scene right? Yeah, mm-hmm. the most Oscars. So I was like, let me check this out. I fell asleep in the middle of it. Water ain't got no shape. Um, no, I mean it's metaphorically, but you know, it's a lot of bestiality. People was having sex with animals. I mean, I thought that nigga was a fish. I don't know what he was. It was like about this white girl who's a mute. Um, and she work at like some the NIH, the <laughs> NSF. That's what I would say is equivalent to. Mm-hmm. In She's a housekeeper with Octavia Spencer, and then they bring in this animal creature man thing, and they doing experiments on them, and they start connecting, and he able to talk to her, but she you knows she can't talk, so mm-hmm. they just hold hands up like E.T. and talk through vibrations. Was he a merman? I don't know what this nigga was. He could have been a catfish. Like I don't, oh. I don't know what he was. I'm not into it. <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of connected and then Octavia Spencer respect on Queen but she was playing her role from the help and you know mm-hmm. you told master to sit down get over here girl I said god damn it I just watched Black Panther I can't do this <laughs> toot 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 like that's a, choo, choo, I choo, want to sit there to come get her choo, 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 where's the daylight show at what, what's it daylight called? show oh, what are they called <laughs> Dora Milaje <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? Where's De La Soul? Come get her. Come save Octavia Spencer from this shit she done signed up into. Uh, I mean, but like, she acted well, but it just, I don't, like, it should, you know what it should have been? Mm-hmm. It should have been a movie that came on IFC. Oh. <laughs> like a nice little cute independent. Mm-hmm. And then like, it got weird, so she captured them, and then like, they had sets together. Oh. That's just, it's bestiality, nigga, I ain't lying. And like he a merman, and then here come out, here come help. The help. What's her woman name in the help? I forgot her name. Oh, with the shit pie, she asking the mute girl, "How did you have sex with him?" Oh, y'all can't see my hand. And she like moved her hand and like poked it through. So I'm assuming that it, like a lizard. I don't. <laughs> I was uncomfortable on the plane. <laughs> I was like, white people don't got better. No, white people rather give an Oscar to bestiality than. Uh, then get out. Oh, <clears throat> or Black Panther. Or it's not nominated near him. It's next year. So it was just one of them things where I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, how did this even? <laughs> what am I watching?" Mm-hmm. It was just really. I mean, I guess equivalent to what like La La Land. What was that last year yeah. about a white man learning jazz? Like, what? How are these movies? What the fuck am I missing? And you know what I was really disappointed with about this movie. G- G- Guillermo del Toro directed it. Oh, don't know who he is. What? Yes, you do. You usually write do those scary movies, Latino guy. Oh, okay. and I was like, bruh, you giving me what's the one who did the Sit Sense in the Village? M Night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. I said you're giving me M Night Shyamalan realness on this shit because you know M Night Shyamalan, all his movies aren't good. 
It's like want to be amazing, trash, 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 amazing. It's like an SOS signal. Trash, 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 good. Trash, 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 good. Don't do that, Del Toro, because I usually like him. Well, I mean, yeah, Del Toro, because I usually like his movies. Mm -hmm. Because I think he did Split. Like, he does really good thrillers and Mm -hmm. horror psychological material. Now he do porn. Why are you, dear? What's oh. I, I guarantee, like, it made me want to go on Pornhub to just look up Shape of Water to see if these niggas is out here dressed up as mermaids having sex see. in the water. What are you about to check? I'm mm-hmm. telling you, it was, it was, it was a, it was a story of a white woman falling in love with a catfish, and the white men weren't having it. That was it. Oh. <laughs> um. Next, look, look. As I transition to the Lord. Uh, my gospel playlist been getting me together for the past couple days like it really i don't know y'all like as a form of self-care y'all know i'm working through that i had to create myself a little gospel playlist and when i tell you my gospel playlist has banged and it has got me through my ride to my ride to work on my way back while i'm getting up in the morning cooking and cleaning and it just changes like it just changed my mind frame like i always know music is powerful and it changes right you know your mood and energy and everything but music this week really shifted to be like a form of devotional does that make sense like Nero, it really has become like a form of devotional. So I encourage any of y'all who need a little moment, take a little bit of time to create y'all your own list. It might not be gospel music. I don't know what it's gonna be, but make sure you do it. Maybe I can share mine with y'all somehow. All else feel if you're just looking for some black gospel music, just go to Pandora and do Kurt Franklin and the family. That whole playlist will get your life together. There's a shape of water playlist on Pornhub. Oh, did I just talk about the Lord and this nigga's on I don't found the Pornhub? Every sinner got a what? Yeah. Future and every saint got a past. I, oh, I'm near I people, guess that's the same. Is that the same? Nero, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not lying. She has sex with the, the catfish. Oh, they got it on Pornhub. Oh, well, oh, the scene is considered a yes. set. Oh, I thought people was like, you know how the sets people knock it off. Yeah, and they ain't did that yet. Oh, oh. it's coming. Because oh, soon as I say that's all I could think of. So it got that. They got that scene and then they got women squirting. Nero, I just talked about devotional. Nero, I just talked about. Did, were you listening to me, Nero? Remember so, we talked about yeah. this before. Were you even listening to me? You had went so fast, I was still searching. Who, who, who encouraged you, or what? What? You had what brought it up. You to do that. You brought it up, and I was like, "Well, let me go check." Oh, you thought I was lying? For the folks who've seen The Shape of Water, y'all know what I'm talking about. I was a porn. I ain't know Del Toro do porns. Um, and lastly. For all the folks who are screenwriters, who write series and all that good stuff, Lena Waithe put on, I think it's her Twitter or Instagram, that um, I want to pull it up. It's this certain website you go to and you pay for folks to edit it. And if you get a score of eight and above, her and her team is going to read it. Mm -hmm. So for all the creatives out there, I want to get the exact name of it. Y'all need to go check this out. What it says, on it was on her yeah, Instagram. It said, hey, guys, if you put your script up on at the blacklist, is T-H-E-B-L-C-K-L-S-T site, pay to get an evaluation and get an eight or above, my team will read your script. In parentheses, it says, don't ask me how much the evaluation costs. That's on the site. Let's just say it's less than your phone bill. Come on. Y'all asking for a sign from the Lord? You've been saying, Lord, please, please make a way out of no way. Lena is blessing people. I put on for my city. Lena is blessing people. So if y'all into writing scripts, plays, movies, I don't know. That's really not Niambi's area or role. Y'all need to come on and um, submit to this blacklist. And she says less than a phone bill. So I'm assuming it's less than $100. Nia, let's get together. We've been having some stories. So y'all go ahead and get your little $100 together. This time you need to ask to buy our money, whoever you're going to do to make your dreams come true. Bet on yourself. And you better come on and do it now. If anybody looking for a reason. And somebody woke up this morning and said, I need a sign. This the sign. Whoever woke up this morning was like, I need a sign that I need to move forward on a project. Now, I'm the sign. Cuckoo! Do it. Do it. Especially the creatives and the writers. Y'all better jump up on this. Even if you're not. Even if your dad don't fall into it. If you woke up this morning like, I just need a sign to step out on faith and do something. Now, is telling you to do that shit now. And here's the bird call. What? What is it? For the sign. Toot, toot, toot. No. Toot, 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 toot,
<laughs> Can we get that on the mug? <laughs> <laughs> Cuckoo. That's the sign, to niggas. Do it. But isn't that a wonderful opportunity? That is a wonderful opportunity. I don't think I know any folks who are into like screenwriting screen writing and things of that we sort. We don't have creatives. Like, we don't have like artists like that write. Like, I'm thinking like, like screenwriting and yeah. things of that sort. Or like journalists. Like, we have folks who write, but not in that. Mm-hmm form of right but uh, hell. hell you know maybe it's i got a snow day coming up Look. so maybe i step out on faith and just go start typing some shit up and see what um lena say what's that master class i'm about to take shonda's take uh shonda screen right and just class. write something real quick and, and, send it. <laughs> and see if the know. lord because let me talk about look i'll do this on friday let me talk about the lord's grace and mercy you don't know what he'll do you don't know what doors you don't know i be telling god all the time go ahead speak for me lord write for me what Nia said, the Lord was his first author. He plagiarized often for his dissertation. I be asking the Lord, speak for me, Lord. Actually, speaking of grace and mercy, when I was driving to work today, I swear to cop. First of all, I, I was behind these people going slow in hell. So I had to go all the way to the other lane, come back over and get over. And so the cop, I seen him roll behind me. I said, he about to get my monkey ass. Like, bitch, where are you going? But you can tell he rolled behind me. And you can tell he, I guess he searched my license plate and was like, nah, bitch, that ain't worth it. I said, grace and mercy. Look at the Lord. <laughs> what did they be? I mean, I don't have a, anything on there. Do you just see it ain't worth it? No. It don't matter. The Lord put it on his heart. Because I know he was. Because he rolled up on me and then he pulled back. So you trying to see my license plate. Yeah, he, he ran your plates. You, you trying to see what's going on, huh? Mm-hmm. What you looking for? Trying to see the devil. drug mule, mule or something. You see if I who? Drug mule. In a Jeep? Yeah. <laughs> So I knew that was great summer. Sometimes I just want to see what come up when they do that. What come, like what? I don't know. My yeah, does just... my fam- smiling face come up? Like what? Yeah. And I'm that's pretty sure. that's connected to just the license plate. Yeah. And that's it. Mm-hmm. The cars on to such and such. There's no pending warrants. Jesus. Addresses. Blah 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 blah. Oh. What would the bad things? It would just say warrants. Yeah, like pending warrants, things of that sort. Whether the car was stolen or not, report stolen. You know, I'm good. I, I don't have police. I'm blaze your car stolen. Motherfucker, you tell me. I don't want what, what? Didn't you run my plate? With the grace. Look, I'm talking about the Lord. You know, y'all know I'm on the wrong crooked path. I'm trying to be in that gratitude, grip, devotional spirit. But I, at the end, I was like, thank you, Lord. I know that was you. Because I don't know if I could have took that on the way to work. Because I don't even know what the conversation would have been. I would have been like, the, and I had to get around the people's going slow because they was on the phone. So I was waiting for them to pull me over to be like, I got out their way because they were on the phone and I didn't want them to kill me. <laughs> them who you should have pulled over. <laughs> Look, matter of fact, I remember their license plate. That's what I wanted to say. But I was like, I know that was going to spiral or something. Mm-hmm. What do you think the cut would have said about that? Oh. They was on the phone while you're looking at my black ass. Have a nice day, man. Nigga. All right, that's all I got, Nero. Troop, 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 But the lowest grace and mercy. I'm Teflon. Everything was bouncing off to me. Even a bot store. I said I was done. Even a bot store folks was trying to get at me today, but I was Teflon. Oh, it just fell right on off of you. It did. And it wasn't even my cat. You know, cash. Nah, of I'm course, sick. my car attendant. He's clueless. He just clocked out 10 minutes early. Oh, I got one story for y'all. Y'all know the old lady. Which one? The, hour, the real old one. The one I said I, that I've been telling them that they she got dementia. Mm-hmm. Guess what the fuck she did today? I don't know. She came me in at eight. Well, I closed, so I didn't know. So they come to Nyambi, Nyambi. Oh my God, we're so happy you're here. Because I closed, right? Because mm-hmm. usually I'm opening, but I was closing. And I knew of something because they was waiting for me at the door like some kids, like Desi. So you ever just see somebody looking out the window and I'm walking towards the door? Yeah. I said, Is y'all niggas just waiting on me? <laughs> Why <laughs> ain't nobody working? <laughs> Who's that front? <laughs> and it was like, Nyambi, oh my God, we're just so happy you're here. We didn't know what to do. Um, Miss So and So, they was like, we sent her um on a break at ten, and we ain't seen her since. What? I got in at two. <laughs> Where the fuck was she? She walked the fuck out. I, Nayambi had to say, "Did y'all look at the video?" Oh my god! Because I guess about first of all, I think they took an hour. I guess about eleven. They looked up and like she ain't back. I said after twenty minutes, breaks are only fifteen minutes. After twenty minutes, if she's not back. Remember, I had to go look for her. Y'all remember the stories I told you about her? I'd be like, Miss So and So, it's time. Your break is over. Or she'd be turned off. Her, I got to watch her like a hawk. She turned off that light. I'd be like, Where are you going? She said, It's time for me to go home. I said, No, it's not. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and what they didn't do. <laughs> they didn't keep an eye on her ass. <laughs> She's eased the fuck on she out. She's eased onto the road. <laughs> I was like, But where did she can't drive? 
I don't know where she went. I hope she got home. They called her um, husband. It's like she made it home. <sighs> she caught the bus. I don't know what she did. But th- how long I been telling them? That woman got the wee baby sitting up in here. I and they she- was worried. They talking about did she pass out? They look like she go pass out. And my um my uh, person that's under me. So I'm I'm a like up front, and then I have mm. other like assistant managers under me. Up front. He was like, we thought she died. And I wasn't ready for her to die. They was, I was like, what you, well, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, we thought we was going to go down to animal food. I she's going to be laying there. I said, Jesus. What's wrong with y'all? What, what's wrong with them, Nero? I can't with y'all. But I was like, why y'all wait an hour? She been going to start looking for her. And her ass had made it home. <laughs> and then I was like, I wanted to be like, Miss So-and-so, you think you only supposed to work an hour and a half and you go home? I bet she ain't getting written up. No, she Oh, you know what they dumb ass gonna say? We gonna tell the store manager to talk to her. About fucking what? Please stop leaving early. Because that's all I would say. <laughs> or No, I ain't gonna say that. I'm like, if you need to leave early, just come talk to me. Right. Because so. if we need to have a conversation, we need to bring the whole family in. Be like, you, should, you know, how do you tell somebody she need to be evaluated? She's still all right. She probably got another six months to a year. But that probably in a year, it's gonna be a wrap. It's gonna be a wrap for her. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she got dementia. And I feel like I'm the only one that really, everybody's like, no. She's just old. I said, no, she got something. No, she got something. We babysitting. We is adult daycare that we paying her. It's you the just, best deal on earth. This is an adult the, daycare. They're on Melage to watch her. Get back here. <laughs> toot, toot, toot. That's, <laughs> that's why she kind of, I don't, I think she almost don't like when I work because she got a favorite register that's uh-huh. far away. But when she work with me, I'd be like, no, nah, I'll come right here. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> that's she. So I know when she going too, too far, because her other registry she like is far away. And mm-hmm. if you at the right angle, you really can't see it. And she has be gone. Come on. But when I got it right under me, looking at her, in all angles, right? So guest service, everybody can see. Uh-huh. She in this, I put her in the central register. <laughs> and I one that keep her busy, too. I do that on purpose. So, you know, because if she's far away, they're going to go to the other registers first. No, you the first one. I want you to be like, it's time for my break. I want you to flash the light and be like, I can't get off. <laughs> Is that dirty of me? Mm-mm. I done made a way out of no way. You got to keep them busy. That's why I keep them busy and keep an eye on her. And I never leave her alone, even when I go on my break. So I'm like, watch so-and-so. <laughs> Don't let her leave. She ain't due for nothing. <laughs> she ain't supposed to leave. She ain't working on no projects. He going to tell her to use the bathroom and everything. Go have your potty break. It, not now. I Quickly come back. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. But she went missing today, and that whole store freaked out. <laughs> All right, Nam, go ahead. Choop, 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 choop around choop, choop. her, around Miss Miss So and So. So uh, back to Jay and Beyonce plotting and things of that sort. Oh, yeah, 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 they plotting. I just take the top off my Maybach. Is that the name of the song? Yeah, it's a, it's a dope song. I could have <laughs> did without Future. We could have left Future down the street at the brainstorming stage. What the hell is wrong with him? I don't know. Is his auto tune bad? You said <laughs> auto tune bad. Like it seemed like it wasn't auto correct. Like is it not tuned up? It don't even sound right. I don't know. I could have did without future, but Beyonce all the way without Beyond. I mean, future. Beyonce tore that damn song down though. She did better than her husband. Yeah, she did. Way better. So I enjoy that song. That's on my workout playlist now. Um, what did she say? She the most searched, and she ain't too. Yeah, she, t- she said she broke the internet. Mm-hmm. And she top two and she not two, motherfucker. Telling all the hosts to what? Sit down, be humble. Um, or more so that she need an NDA. I said, not a problem. What do I sign? <laughs> they come from Tiffany Haddish telling that story when she was about to get in a fight somewhere. Oh, oh, that's what she said? Yeah. Well, she didn't say Tiffany Haddish, but she said, if you're going to party with the queen, you need to sign an NDA. So Tiffany Haddish was mind. like, well, where my NDA at so I can continue to party? Oh, was she shading her? A mixture. She shading yeah. a lot of people. I'm Basically, you're saying, hey, hold up, ho. Mm, you know, keep my name out your mouth. When we party together, nothing is like Vegas. Mm-hmm. Nothing comes out. And then here comes Tiffany ass. I was about to get in the fight, and Jay-Z, I mean, and Beyonce told me not to do nothing. She said it ain't worth it. And then we took a selfie, and I grabbed the booty. See, they asked, they were like, what did you and Beyonce do? I said, read the Bible. <laughs> It was in devotional. <laughs> it's wonderful. What? Why are you laughing at me? Oh, shit. 
That's how you throw people off. What you doing reading the Bible and devotion? Man, I'm so disconnected. Um, we got the news like um, on mute while we are sitting at the kitchen table. I don't forget it was even fucking March Madness. That's a disconnect I am sports. March Madness. Don't get me to reading them boys in them universities. I know. I ain't taking care of them boys. Mm-mm. March Madness. Um, Who gives a f- <laughs> Who cares? Moving forward, my homeboy spread love came over. Uh, for the all those of y'all know, we had spread on here before. Uh, he the one he, who made the uh, the intro beat. Mm-hmm. So you know it was good just talking to him. He's like, man, I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. What you doing? I said, shit, man, I'm just get off my two jobs. Okay, you come Niram. through, Niram. You don't always have to tell us how many jobs you have. You know what, Niram is spoiled and privileged because it's my check in. Uh, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> it's my chicken. I feel like for more than half my life, I've had two jobs. And Neil done got two jobs, and he constantly reminds everyone daily. <laughs> like he's special. Nigga, Nigga join the clock. Nigga, I am special. 10 to 10. I am special. And 10 again. Nigga. You do. I got two jobs. I do. Shit, you work from home half the time. No, hold, don't be hating. <laughs> I'm not hating. I'm just mm-hmm. letting you know the facts. I'm, I still work hard, goddammit. I didn't say you didn't. But um, I love to work from home in the bot store. Oh, you love to do some okay. <laughs> I would love to do it. Speaking of working off at home, like I've been working real hard on this project that was due um, today. And uh, it was a marketing plan uh, for oh, the I thought business. you meant like a school. I said, you no, a school. <laughs> no, but, you know, it was a big project. Like a marketing plan ain't no hoe, especially done right. And the thing is, like my boss told me about it on Thursday, like, hey, Nero, can you have a marketing plan done by Tuesday? Like, what? Yeah. Like, that's impossible. Impossible. But, you know, I you know, I still strive for excellence and things oh. of that sort. Because we had, um, A, I did it because I was like, I don't know if this is a test. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we're a startup. Mm-hmm. Um, and his ass has been letting people go lately. Really? Yes. You ain't tell me that. So I came and work uh, as I came back from the flu, and Jerry was gone. Jerry, not his real name, but Jerry was gone. Which one is that one? My uh, favorite one? Mm, no. Latino guy? No. Oh, huh. he, he was already gone. The Latino oh! guy gone already. <laughs> his ass been gone for about a couple months. Oh, my God. Jerry was this uh, uh, other old white guy. He just there. You know, he's like one of the real estate agents or whatever. Mm. So I came back, and I was like, oh, where's Jerry? No, I came in, and I was like, oh, Jerry must be gone. And it's like, yeah, he's now no longer with us. And I was like, in what context? Is he dead? Oh, my God. Is he dead? <laughs> and it's like, no, Jerry don't work here no more. Oh, I was like, what? Okay, well, we can rebound from that. <laughs> Be okay. So, you know, they've been restructuring. You know, they're going to have this, uh, let's say you have this consultant come in and shit. So, you know, motherfucker shifting and shit like that. And I was like, this nigga going to ask me, can I have a, a goddamn uh, marketing. marketing plan done in uh, four days? Yeah. Actually, three. Thursday, Friday, Monday, and part of Tuesday because the meeting was at 11. It went from 11 to 4. Mm. So, any old goddamn way I was going to have a marketing plan done by that. I mean, the level of done, though. Yeah. They only know. But, you know, and I went in there, and that's the thing, because, like, everybody on the, each team is supposed to come, in, like, to come together with, like, an 18-month plan. Yeah. And things of that sort, like, break it down, like, 3, 6, 9, um, you know, 12 and 18. And, you know, people came in with, like, one page, and I came in with, like, a 12-page a type of thing. Ooh, you. <laughs> Neil. And they was looking at me like, Nero. Bitch. Such it wasn't Nero. I'm telling you what they're doing, such, bitch. A such, shiner. Such a fucking overachiever. Oh, Boo. What I did like about this meeting is that we had wine. And so my, these Ooh. motherfucking white folks. Did was you push it back loose, from the table? Was getting loose. I had me a little bit. I, I was, I was just done. swirling. I do not believe in drinking alcohol around white people. I was just having a little swirl. Meetings, no. And these white folks was A, tearing it up, but was cutting it to the, each other because that liquor. Well, that's actually a good idea. Whenever I go drink with colleagues, I always get just seltzer water with a lime so it looks like a gin and tonic. <laughs> You're not getting me. You won't get me to call you a crafty colonizer on the record. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get me on the record. <laughs> so it was just lit because everybody was a little tipsy just getting into each other's ass. That is stupid for a three-month plan. Oh, my God. That's something that should have been done a long time ago. Oh, they well, that's, that's why it's called a three-month plan. They said, nigga, you should have did that last <laughs> week. You late. 
but you know, uh, for what I presented, I was, you know, I was relatively all right with it. But you know, it wasn't to to le- you know, it wasn't to the level of caliber that I expect. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? We got a um, fucking nor'easter coming. Oh, I'm so sick of this shit. So this is the second nor'easter in, in a week. T- yeah. My fucking shit flooding and shit like that. Luckily for us, we live too much inland that we ain't gonna get no flood. But hell, we might get like fourteen inches of snow. Jesus. I'm so and y'all know I'm at the box store, so everybody was in there buying shovels and eggs. I said, y'all niggas don't have shovels. Why they buy eggs? It's milk cereal, ham, hot dogs. My question is that why, whenever it's a big snowstorm, everybody always buy breakfast food. Eggs, bread, milk, like they doing French well, toast or something. Well, actually, whenever, honestly, I used to be, well, I usually, my refrigerator would be stopped, but whenever it's a snowstorm, you're supposed to eat like your, like brunch. You didn't do that? No. Like you cook a thick ass breakfast and then you put something in the slow cooker that I cook all day and you make some dessert. Like snow days is you make a thick ass brunch. After your brunch, you put the brownies in the oven and put whatever you're going to put, piece of meat. In the slow cooker, and you just let it go all day. No, nah, my mom. And you full because of the brunch. And when you get lunch, instead of eating lunch, you eat some cupcakes or brownies. And then when the crock pot done, you do it because you got to have energy from going outside and playing and watching movies. Well, my mom always says cook the big ass pot of greens and say, "Boy, you better eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner." I'm sorry. <laughs> what you and them damn greens? Okay, uh, we got a black love story. Of course. We do. Um, it's always if you want to submit a black love you story. Sound happy about the black. No, <laughs> I gotta I have to adjust myself. Oh, as no, I, I don't. I just transition topics. <clears throat> I mean, you can be with me or not. As always, if yeah. you would like to submit a black love story, go to blacklovematters dot com slash love story. Yeah, and submit your love story, and we will shout you all out because mm-hmm. that's what we do. Um, this week's black love story is from Coco and DJ. Coco. DJ. Well, like the, everyone got a good couple. Cup, Coco, Coco and, and DJ. DJ. That sounds like a reality show, too. I feel like I want to play Splays with these niggas. Oh my God. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We're going to have Coco and DJ over. We're going to play Spades. Mm-hmm. Dominoes. Uh, who have been together for uh, one and a half years. Uh, how did they first meet? How did they first meet? Uh, we met as lifeguards at the age of at the tender age of 15. <laughs> Later, uh, we went to prom together. I went away for college. We had zero contact, and while I was away in another state, we both lived life on different sides of the country. Wow. Uh, he was in a seven-year relationship. Ooh. Ooh, he was going strong. Uh, then I moved back home in 2015. As his relationship came to an end, we started dating in 2016. We rekindled through a mutual friend who shall remain nameless. Oh, okay. Mm. Situation shit. Yeah. Look, 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 why are we nosy? That'd be sometimes the best relationship with the folks who've been in it long term. I'm always curious the folks who are in long term relationships and break and like how do you transition back into the relationship, right? Well, well, that should be you. Well, I was young. You was in a long term relationship? I was young though. You're Younger. S- serial monogamous. I am a serial monogamous. I, I guess th- maybe that's it. Sometimes I-, I like the idea of being in a relationship. I feel like I'm 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 good. Mm. Or like I feel like I'm a good good me, right? When I'm in a relationship and I have a partner, when I have like mirrors to bounce stuff off of. Like I enjoy I enjoy being in a relationship. But a single's okay too. No. Oh, okay. I have fun single too. That's gotcha. so long as it's single. I don't even know what that means. Oh. Would you like to try it out? Oh <laughs> nigga, say the word. <laughs> <laughs> you... Say the word. If you feeling froggy jump. Okay? I'm just you saying just let me know. You didn't want to say who if, if you're Ooh. feeling froggy jump. I don't jump, know. I don't know what don't. it means to be single anymore. I don't. It gets to the point even sometimes where I've stopped it probably a few years ago when like my single girlfriend to say something. Like I don't even like I just like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I give a very neutral, like I don't even give advice because it's like, girl, I don't know. Like Shit, if I was single, I'd be in my drawers watching Netflix, like spending money. <laughs> I have a cat daddy. Like, I would just be living life. <laughs> when did each of you know that your partner was the one? <laughs> Am I reading this near him? Sure. I was, um, a, I'm a super particular, I'm super particular as a Virgo should be. Hello. Oh my God, Virgos. Virgos are so meticulous to a detriment. You'd be like, just make a fucking decision. It's all right. And he is an emotional. Okay. Oh my God, a Virgo and a Cancer in a relationship together. 
Is the Virgo hurting the Cancer's feelings a lot? You know what? I'm not going to let y'all be rolling up on Cancer's like that. Y'all, about. it's not a bad thing, but y'all are very in touch and in tune with y'all emotions and process them. And that's not something that a Virgo does often. Like, a Virgo has feelings and emotion they care, but you just can't tell by their face. And you saying you can tell from a cancer source? Absolutely. Y'all wear y'all shit on your sleep. Get the fuck out of here. Sleep, please, on the face. Y'all gonna tell us. You ain't gotta walk. You just gonna walk in the room. I have a cancer who works at guest service. And as soon as I open, as soon as I think she hear my handle, hand on the handle of the door, she telling me the update of the day. <laughs> Every time. It doesn't matter. Every time it is something. Nayambi. So, can you believe the most horrible thing happened today? I said, what happened? Somebody left some ice cream in the go bags. Is that the worst thing that happened today? Yes, evidently. <laughs> Is that something I need to know? Anyway, we went through a situation where he um, let, he let, I picked up. And I went through an emotional time where he supported me and stood in and picked me back up. Anyone, that's what cancers do. Yes, cancers are very good about supporting you. Anyone who can stand by me through antisocial, introverted, sometimes overly critical, schmood is okay in my book. Yeah, cancers are very okay with like taking that. Like they can take, although they have their own emotional baggage, they can hold a lot of other people's emotional baggages. Where other signs they be like, "This is too fucking much." Hold that shit. Gemini's will leave you in a minute. Sure they flaky will. ass. Like you know, it's just certain signs they be like mm, Pisces. They fickle too. They like it's just certain signs. It's like I'm really not here for. Or if you do a Scorpio, like they can't handle it because they're not even in tune with their own shit. <laughs> so when they see somebody else going through some emotion, they don't even know what an emotion is. <laughs> what is that? What is that person doing? They don't know what an emotion <laughs> is. <laughs> the fuck is that now? They, the, the Scorpios know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't with you. What you next question. <laughs> what advice would you give to... Uh, no, no. Nero. What is the key to success? What is the key to, to your relationship success? Uh, the key to our re- success is the ability to make me feel safe and secure in all uh, capacities. Virgo. Virgo. Financially, emotionally, and spiritually. We can talk about Migos and or readings of Baldwin yes. in the same conversation, and that is something we both appreciate. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Speaking of that, yeah. I just found on Twitter this uh, Google Drive link of all like black readings. Oh, you get send it to me. Yeah, we should link it out to the folks. That it's dope. It is like hot it, fun. what is it like? All it, like quintessential reading for niggas. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, for African Americans. Yeah, so it was like it got is it all fiction, nonfiction. What is it? All the black creators. Oh, like from the, some the like everywhere. Yeah, so it's from... so like somebody named it like Black History, um, readings or something like that, and hmm. you um, can see how much I've read. The Black History Month Library. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it's on the Google Drive. Oh my goodness! Please send me that. And somebody shared it on um, Twitter. Yeah, and um, it, it just got it got like fiction, nonfiction, all types of other stuff in there. It's pretty, uh, fucking dope. My phone is loading a little slow, mm. but um, no. So like Af- Afrofuturism, oh. Angela Davis, Bell Hooks, Black communists, Marxist, oh, black, black film scripts, Black feminists, uh, Cornel West, Jerry Lee, not Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Frederick Douglass, not Prince Fanning. A black philosopher. Come on, y'all be sleeping. Y'all love W. E. Du Bois, but y'all forgot about France. What's him call it? Q. Klux Klan, Nazis, Michael Max, Marcus Ida Garvey, Wells, um, Patricia Hill Collins, Snick, Rosa Parks, different black speeches, Black Panther Party, W. E. Du Bois, Zero Neil Hurston. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and then like other stuff that's also in there. So those are like all the different. Oh, link that to folders. Black Love thing. And then download. Don't don't put it on my real Gmail. Put it on the Black Love. You put it on the Black yeah, Love. I don't know if there's a virus. Thing, you know? But they got like videos of different stuff. What? So like, you know, free uh, Hugh and Eaton talks. Well, maybe uh, we get some talks Asante from Shakur here. interviews. Michael Max interview at Berkeley. Marcus Garvey for a documentary. Oh Oprah, yeah, we Oprah got Winter, a, a biography. Uh, it's it's just a lot of stuff, um, wow. and somebody has shared it on um, Instagram. I can't I can't remember who it was, 
but uh, I think I sh- uh, liked it or whatever, so I can't find the name. But they shared it, and I was like, I need this. I'll take that link. Thank you very much. Immediately. And let me uh, download this shit before it's all gone. That's what I said. Make sure we got to download it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, nigga, it just disappear, honey. It will. Because the, the colonizers don't want us to have the knowledge. No, they sure the, don't. It ain't going to be us who delete it. The colonizers going to delete it. <laughs> um, the, that says, what's the keys to your... Uh, no, we already did it. So what mm. advice would you give young married couples? It says, first of all, we're not married, but if we were to tell a young, we need to change that. It don't have to be married. You know, it could just be young or new couples. Maybe mm. not even young, new, new couples, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if I were to tell a young couple anything, it would be to make sure that the person you consider a partner is your best friend first. Also to understand your own capacity to give, receive, and love and be uncompromising. That's a word. Mm-hmm. You know, I love being best friends. Yeah. But I think, you know, what's something new I think we don't talk about a lot is understanding your own capacity when it talks about giving, receiving love and being uncompromising. Like you really do have to know what is your limit, what is not your limit and mm-hmm. what you're willing to give and what you're not willing to give. Like it's huge, right? Yeah. Um. Lastly, it says anything else you want to tell us about your love story? It says in just a short time established and in, sh- in just a short time, we established something great. Travel, fussed at one another but we have been able to learn a lot about one another as adults um appreciate all the flaws life has thrown at us individually i'm his sweetheart and he is my happiness in human form mm. cute right yeah yes coco so, and dj thank so you so much coco and dj for sharing this I love story. That love story i love how they were together then came back and went away like i, I loved all that it was mm-hmm. amazing perfect yeah. we got some uh, pillows up yes what we got so y'all heard about this restaurant in New Orleans. It's a New Orleans based I'm gonna be shady. A New Orleans based Nigerian pop up restaurant is causing quite a store for conducting a social experiment that focuses on white people um to come to grips with the social disparities. So restaurant tour, Chef Two Day Way, um, and the name of his restaurant is Ro Carre, started this social experiment to see how white customers react. Get this, y'all. If you're white, you will be asked to pay $30. If you are black, Latino, or Asian, the bill will be $12. Okay. While the prices are not mandatory, Way was curious if white customers will pay the price. At first glance, the prices seem arbitrary, but then ref- but they reflect the disparities in medium household incomes of white people in New Orleans, which make about 67000 versus black who make about $27,000. Mm. Um, the point is not to charge people more for lunch based on their race. The point is to make people experience in a concrete situation how income disparities affect daily decisions like um, what to pay for lunch as well as lifelong altering opportunities and even personal health. The restaurateur recruited college volunteers to collect data and the customers' reactions as he told them about the pricing. Despite the allegations of racism thrown his way online, he told NPR um, that many are enthusiastic. Some of them are um, bamboozled a bit by it. But the majority of white folks, nearly 80 percent, decided to pay, Mm -hmm. Um, um, said a a number of the folks um they said the price was definitely higher than they expected and he's still going to continue the experiment to march 11th this is some donuts and discussion type shit here what do you think about that this is definitely some donuts and discussion i wonder I, I guess you i have to see how they present it because mm-hmm. what you do to come in with that shit yeah this is absolutely isn't this something isn't this an event it is when Niggas. like you come oh but it ain't price like it's come and you only get white rice and then you come and you get filet and then somebody get a ham sandwich. <laughs> and it, <laughs> but it's all supposed to be like a free banquet or something. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Is that a thing? I, yeah, I just it's, up a it's the donuts and discussion. It's not model. donuts. It's really called something. Y'all know, for the folks who are higher ed, what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? When one person get, actually somebody get just an empty plate. I think one person just get air. And then somebody get rice. Then it's a ham sandwich. Then it's like steak. Mm. And it's supposed to represent something. But I don't think it's like race. Like, I think that's very focused on America. I think it's more global, like mm-hmm. global implications and um, like hunger and representations of like what people eat. Gotcha. You said there's some donuts discussion. It is. Shit. You know, coffee and conversation. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop you know, it, Nero. I'm for real. The donuts based off, look, Native American, you get your donuts for free. No, they, oh, I was going to say they get air. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I think. 
I wonder what pushed him to do that. Like, I mean, I guess it's also this good. Publicity. Hell, he's seen Black Panther. And he said the colonizers <laughs> between Black Panther <laughs> and uh, the shit that's going on in South Africa. Shit. Come on. He put those both together and said, I got something for the colonizers. He said, not today, Satan. I'm expressing <laughs> my American right to do what the fuck I want when I want. I would love to be a fly on the wall for the white people who got mad, though. Mm-hmm. They had to be, let me talk to your manager. I am the manager. I'm the manager, owner, the proprietor. I'm all of this, okay? You mad you ain't got to eat here. <laughs> Leave. But he said, you know, they ain't, he, he's like, well, if they complain, you can pay their $12. Fine. Go. Yeah. Pay their 12 Get out. <laughs> Bitch. I'm just curious, what, when did it come across his mind? Like, yeah, I'm going to do this shit. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm a, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me some grad students. We're going to do some qualitative data in this motherfucker. We're going to do some observations. Field studies. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder what the grad students is thinking. What city was this in? What is the, uh, t- do you see what I'm talking about before? This is for learning for the sake of not like, what is this going to show? I don't know what the hell this going to show. <laughs> What if, what is this gonna add to or less is it just entertainment? It is entertainment shit for its own entertainment. Let me see how these white folks act. And if they none of them act, they just give me the money. Hell, even more better for me. America. Yes. Well, I just wanted to share that with y'all. I thought mm-hmm. that was something interesting. Next, Queen Von Zahn is back. Fits my motherfucking life. Did y'all see this? It came out what a couple days ago? hmm I I missed it the day it came out, but I had to rewatch this shit. So it was kidnapped at birth, Kamaya. That's the name of it, Jesus. So just to give a summary of it is it's about this young lady. Her name is her birth name is Kamaya. And what happened was when she was eight hours old, the woman who raised her kidnapped her Mm. and kidnapped her for 19 years. But the young lady, Kamaya, Mm-hmm. assumed that that was her birth mother right? and things didn't start getting fishy and took Kamaya tried to get a job or was trying to lead a country or a passport or something and they asked for her birth certificate and the mother couldn't get it and that's when she broke down and told her that what it, the bitch I, I ain't your mama I ain't your birth mama <laughs> and then Kamaya you know she older she's like oh am I adopted like uh-huh. she said um about nah. that, about that adoption. No, nah, I just snatched it out the hospital, and so you know, um, what happened was she connected back with her birth family, mm-hmm. and her mother was actually is getting going to jail for this kidnapping, and um, so she's on Von Zant's show to kind of work through this and try to mend the relationship originally with her mother, but her mother was like, "I'm not going on here." I think the rumor is that her and her mother don't talk. Mm-hmm. And then so her father came, the rest of her family came, and they're trying to work through this. So, you know, a true Von Zant firm, she going to work and try to do get get to it. And what Von Zant said, in order to trigger Kamaya into expressing her pain and feelings, she tells the young woman that there's been a change of plans in the healing process. Kamaya will not be returning home for the night between shoots, and her family has been instructed not to answer the phone if Kamaya calls and asks for a ride. Mm-hmm. First of all, we got to this point because she almost looked a little close. I said she gave me ticky, ticky, boom, boom, realness. Mm-hmm. Niram said it wasn't. What did you say it was? I said um, she she disconnected. And was not. Dis- yeah, disassociated. Because Von Zawa asked a simple question, like, how do you feel? She's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Where she was like, well, you, know, no, no, you know, you have to come to terms and say this woman kidnapped you from your birth parents and lied to you about this for years. I don't want to say that. And she's like, don't call my mom a liar. And she'd be like, sis, we got bigger fish to fry than we talking about word choice, right? <laughs> anyway, so the idea of an unexpected overnight stay if, um, pisses off Kamaya, who hurls a string of a split, um, cuss, she basically cussed her out. Oh, she cussed her out. A what nice, the hell was that? Cuss, cuss out, too. Like, bitch, she said, I ain't the one. But I said, where that come I, from? I don't even know where it came from. Because she was so small. I don't know. I yeah. don't know how I feel. Yeah. I, you know, I just, they just met because I still talk to my mom. I was like, well, huh? she is my mom because she raised me. <sighs> Baby, we, we going to have you stay here for the night. Oh, fuck you, bitch. bitch I, was I like, slapped what? this old ass hoe. What? Y'all better get here. What the fuck? Y'all, y'all didn't see. She slapped the shit out of her boyfriend. 
What? That she, wasn't her boyfriend. That was her daddy. No, that was her boyfriend because her boyfriend was there too. Oh, she slapped, she slapped the, slap. the boyfriend daddy too. No, no, she slapped the daddy. Yes, she did at the end. She slapped the shit out of that daddy. I thought that was the boyfriend. That's the daddy. I swear I thought that was the boyfriend. With the bald head. No. He, she smacked, at the end, she smacked that man with that bald head. Or she like tried to push him out the way. I swear I thought that was the... Uh... But Von Zahn in that remained unfazed and turned her attention to her daddy, Craig who stepped in to be the peace maker. Um, th- those words don't bother me, Queen Von Zott tells Craig. What bothers me is um, what's that? In- what's inside of her and nobody's addressing it, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, then moments later, Kamaya aggression behavior prompts Von Zott to raise her hands and declare, I'm out. I'm done. I can't fuck with this because she's like, I'm going to choke the shit out of this Ooh. bitch. She say something else crazy with me. Well, shit, Kamaya about to choke the shit out of Von Zott. What? <laughs> Do you think Von Zot gonna let her? No. She put her hands on Von Zot. And she gonna be off the own network because I believe she will whoop her ass. <laughs> Beloved. Beloved. Beloved, I will choke the shit out I of you out of love. But <laughs> <laughs> I will hold space for you in this chokehold if you ever come at me like that again, okay? I will hold space for you in this chokehold. <laughs> you don't think near him. Not holding space for the chokehold. <laughs> Because I think Von Zahn on a crooked path, too. I think that's why I connect to her sometimes. But first, of all, I want to just talk about what you thought about it, Nira. Was it just crazy? It was a little off. It was a lot. Not a little. It was a lot of off. Like, of all know. the ones we've seen, right? Yeah. And I understand I know it takes time for people to heal, but I was like, whoa. But then I think, at first I was like, maybe they shouldn't have aired that. But maybe that's doing a disservice of not airing it, right? Mm -hmm. Of not showing, like, sometimes you got to be ready for this work. Like, you have to be ready to move forward. You have to be ready to heal yourself. And you can't force nobody to do nothing. Right. My first red flag, though, is when she was like, my mama said I ain't going to do the show. I think initially I thought her mom didn't want the limelight. Uh But nah. I'm thinking. You don't think the girl. See, Niram, you said she was numb. I got ticky ticky from her. You got ticky ticky from her? Yeah, yeah. And not just ticky ticky, I was kidnapped. Because that's a lot, right? So mm-hmm. we ain't kidnapped 19 years, but she those 19 years, from what I see as she presented, she had a decent life. If anything, she looked a little more upset because her parents is not as well off. <laughs> as she thought they was. As her previous. As her stolen mama. mama. <laughs> the mama that went to jail. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, So that's what she honestly looked a little bit more. Well, yeah, because also, because, like, her biological mother was, like, 18 or 17. Yeah, very young. 16, something yeah. like that, yeah. when they had her. Yeah. So, it was just a lot going on. And then it was, like, or th- then I was, like, is the mother mad that the young girl still has feelings for the mama? Or, mm-hmm. the, or the, I don't even know how you, the, the original kidnapped mama? The, yeah, stolen mama. Yeah. And, and I feel, like, almost that if you're going to do something... Like that, like you gotta let that go. This mm. woman, she's grown, right? She's nineteen. We ain't talking about a ten year old. If she still got love for that woman or whatever it is, it, you gotta let her have love for that. I don't mean you gotta love her. That mm. don't mean you gotta invite her to your house. I don't mean you gotta be friends with her. But don't let that make or break your relationship with your daughter. Right. That you can help inform, right? It's a lot. I can't imagine the thought process of thinking your mama is your mama and then kind of find out that she kidnapped your ass. But boom. I want to put respect on Von Zant's name because as much as y'all be talking trash, I think the Von Zant crew is very divided. So it's either folks who ride for or people completely hate her. Mm-hmm. But what I would say, I appreciate Von Zant for putting issues like this for it, right? She does a very good job of putting issues that happen in the black community and more explicitly trauma. Mm-hmm. Like family trauma is real in the African American community. Like so, this one talked about kidnapping, right? Right. But you know, it might not be to the point of kidnapping. But there is a lot of brown people who don't be knowing who their mama and daddies is, and don't know who their mama and daddies is to they grown. Tyler Perry don't keep putting it in his place for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just something we do not talk about as a community. And that creates trauma. That is one of the traumas we have in our community in this idea of secrets, right? Mm. Like when I seen that episode, that's all that kept triggering to me. That wasn't triggering to you? Like to be like, well, I, I know who my parents are. I think they're my parents. Are. Until what? No, I got fine. a passport. so I can. But, that, but don't matter because that'd be times like when your grandma raised you, but you know, you think your grandma, your mama, Mm-hmm. But it's really your, your sister. Like, that shit happens. Yeah, it does. 
more often than not in like black communities, especially black religious or black stuff, like that happens, right? And how do you process through that? With that type of trauma and, and to put it on the front, you got to put all that shit out there. You got to. You got to. How do you heal? You got to get it out of being, you know, a taboo. You have to have something to talk about. So that's what, you know, although I know it's not directly related to kidnapping, but that's almost what this time, this storyline reminded me of in like people not wanting to move forward because she just like the girls like i'm leaving he leave everybody leaving and even the daddy was like you gotta understand this is delicate well this this is a grown woman right. this is she is a grown woman she is not six no more kid gloves yeah you can't you can't do that no but you don't have the privilege of that mm-hmm. right so I, it was and it's gonna be hard because like also like you don't know her no. The daddy don't know her? No. no. The biological mama? Yeah. Like, she's been gone since she's been eight, eight hours. hours. Could, first of all, can we talk about the devastation that if you have a child near the hospital and then the doctor come in, nurse come in, and be like, we can't find your baby. What? First of all. Uh, first of all, <laughs> when I'm done beating ass, taking money, suing, that's only if I can come back from the mental breakdown. Eight hours? Eight hours. I just gave birth to this healthy, happy human being. And my your only job was to go do some footprints right. in, and, and hand put her prints. Ass in an incubator and shit. Yeah. And just lay. And then you gonna come back to me and tell me you don't know where she at? Swaddle her ass. So she told me she done got um lead strength and walked away. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm alligator man. <laughs> my baby that special done learn how to walk at eight hours? So that's a, like, and that's trauma in itself. And can we talk if the parents and and I can only imagine the domino effect mm-hmm. of other folks have they walked through, through it? Mm-hmm. It's just again family trauma in the black community. Another example of it. How do you heal through it? You got anything else about that? You you got any particular family trauma near? A trauma? Trauma? <laughs> trauma? Trauma? Well, I guess your family did go through a lot. Yeah, you know, with you your know. brothers. Man, so my sorry. brother's down. Yeah. Um, a lot of things. Yeah. I don't, so, I don't know. I just, it's just something about that. Did this speak to y'all too? You know, motherfuckers breaking in on Christmas. No, we're not doing that. Near them, stay focused. Oh, it was a trauma. Well, you, and speaking of trauma, did y'all hear about this Central Michigan um, University student for the folks out in Michigan? Or na- it made national news, but for yeah. the folks who live in Michigan, it's degrees of separation. I know y'all know somebody who went to CMU. Like, it's connections, right? That's mm-hmm. how I work in the Midwest, especially he brown. Right. So somebody somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who mm-hmm. knows this young man. From, you know, my m- memory, undergraduate, um, any undergrad PWI, the black folks know folks. Like, mm-hmm. it's only so many. So everybody know everybody. So how was the, how was the black community doing up at CMU? Because when I first heard this story, I swear it was a white boy. You would thought it was a white boy because at first, like, they really didn't give many details. Like, you know, it's a domestic thing. So I was like, oh, no, it was a. First, I thought it was a school shooting. Yes, because it's like shooting at Central Michigan University. And I was like, what the what? white people done did up there? And the, um, first of all, I said they disrespectful. They done did it on the Native American land. The ancestors coming for that ass. Because <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what, what tribe up there? Second on Chippewa. Yeah, come on. I say you you can shoot up the you can shoot up that ancestor land if you want. <laughs> and see who gonna come get your ass. And then it was like, um, oh, no students injured. I said, that ain't what no the school shooting. That then? ain't no school shooting. I said, was it on campus, off campus? Then they said it was a domestic dismute, dispute. And when they said it was a domestic dispute near them, didn't you think it was boyfriend girlfriend? Yes, I, I thought it was. I promise you, I thought it was a boyfriend girlfriend thing. And then fast forward, it was like. Then fast forward, I find out he a nigga. I was like, whoa. Everything I know is not real. <laughs> no. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> so you, you missing this stuff. Because to me, it was like fast forward, it was like kid shoots parents. And I was like, oh. White boy. Oh, this is some white boy shit. And then. And he told him he was going to shoot him. And then it was like, he's a nigga. It's like, oh, oh. shit. Wait a minute. And then. Midwest, but like just real around the way. I said, "What the hell is right. going on?" Mm-hmm. Fucking up our statistics. 
<laughs> I, I can't be the only one in the black community that was like, what the hell is going on? Well, he ain't have no uh, AK-47. Come on. Anyway, so this teen was charged. He's originally from Chicago, was uh, charged with fatally shooting his parents at CMU last week and appeared in court this past Tuesday. Um, his name is Eric James Eric Davis, and he only 19. Ugh, it's just something about them babies. Mm-hmm. Um, has been ho- hospitalized since his arrest Saturday um, on two counts of murder and weapon violations and death of his parents. Um, they set a bail for about $3 million. Um, he's accused of shooting his parents to death after they came to pick him up following a earlier hospita- hospitalization um, for rare erratic behavior. Do you think he was on something? Yeah, he had like to some be on type something. of. You know, it's the day because they said it was the day or so before spring break. Oh, so he so was getting loose. His ass is on something. But fuck, you you know I don't heard about up there in that mid Michigan. You don't know what the fuck is going on up mm-hmm. in there. And then um, he was arrested following an intensive manhunt around the Mount Pleasant um, campus. Because he was missing like half the day. Wasn't he found like on some railroad tracks or something? I don't know where the hell his ass was found at. Um, and then they said their relatives are working on a public statement. They want Eric to know that he has not been abandoned and they still have their great love for him and support him. And it turns out his daddy was a cop. Yeah. And his mama was a flight attendant. Like people was deacon. Like they, he really just come from this family of. Yeah picturesque like it's just some something about this story you know it's devastating and you know my heart goes out to the folks who lost their lives in this whole family but something here not adding up yeah i don't know and i hate is. to say it like that but it's like what is what is going on in the words and now will be something in the milk ain't clean something in the rice ain't clean. oh something in the rice ain't clean because <laughs> it just doesn't make sense so he was in his dorm room he came down, went to the parents' car, got the gun out the daddy. The daddy, like I see a cop, he just ride around with guns in this car. Yeah. Then yeah. came back up, what, four flights of stairs, shot his parents, and just went and left. Like, yeah. Something something right about that. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it just don't. We don't have And there's no history picture. of, like, no, he don't have no criminal record, right? He don't have, like, something's not going. And if you on a rampage of being angry and upset, he didn't kill you, nobody else. In that dorm? Come on. Ain't nobody pissed you off on that. Like, right. Because there's a bunch of. Um, crafty colonizers. Crafty, you know, RAs. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but some, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just something. And then the fact of like hiding. That, like it was just something that just did not make sense. And if you're going to shoot your parent, why would you do it on the college campus? Like right, right. in the dorm room? Like. Maybe you should have got to your house, right? And been in your house when somebody not coming to check up on. Like mm-hmm. he, it just didn't make sense for this young man to be, you know, college educated. Like it's just not adding up to me, right? And I don't know what it is. I don't know what happened, and people lost his lives. But I, I do. My gut is saying also, something ain't right here. It's bond. It's bail as high as that three million dollars. Where the fuck he's going to get that shit from? Nigga, he killed two people. I understand that. You might but get just, out of jail if you murder two people. He's still nineteen though. Three million is the appropriate. Now, nah, three million ain't appropriate if you got some weed on you. <laughs> but you murder somebody and you got to spend the night. <laughs> you got to spend the night. For three million dollars? Yes. yes, you got to spend the night. And you, if, if more so if we don't know a reason, yes. <laughs> you pick jail or the, um, what you gonna call it, the hospital. Give me a 72 hour lockup. Yeah, lockup. I love a good break. So you, so what's your speculation, Daryl? You think he was on some I think bad he was stuff on some and shit. Bad paranoid and like? I think he was partying with the white boys and he went too far. And what, like some bath salts type shit, like I don't eating know. people type shit. What I was that know. in Florida? But yeah. The floor that also was in Atlanta talking Florida about the, the Florida man. <laughs> Florida man is a bitch. <laughs> so in Atlanta, they had thing like us urban legend called the Florida man, and it was just supposed. You know how I hear them strange ass stories from Florida. They be like Florida man eats human with bare hands. Florida man wrestles bear, and so they instead of thinking these are individual people, they think it's just one person <laughs> committing all these crimes named yeah. the Florida man. <laughs> Who the hell y'all think I am, Florida, Florida man? man? <laughs> <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, like something about this story, and I know this might not be a popular opinion, but. It's some more than this. Yeah, I, I don't agree. know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I know something. And is. I'm horribly sad someone died, and who, you know, whatever happens, this just James, young man, he pulled that trigger, and he's gonna have 
consequences for that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he has to meet his maker in the end. But something is going on, even with the family statement. Not that I think the family should abandon him mm-hmm. or anything like that, but they real like, we still look like, yeah, even a statement was just very like, child. No, you're not abandoned. We still love you. Like, what? you know, because it's almost like you, he would be like, if you go kill your parents, you'd be like, well, fuck everybody. Right. Were well, that boy being abused? I don't know. And then he is like, enough is enough. Quit. And it don't even got to be current. It's, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but something not not sitting well with yeah, me. Yeah, it's not adding up. And again, this goes back to trauma where? In the black community, in black family. So as a family, how do you move on from this? How do you move forward within this? How do you mm. grow through this as a family to have this on you? It's tough. You know? This is gonna be uh this is a badass family curse to have. Isn't it? Like yeah. this is something that can have genera not can it will, will have, have generational, generational impacts mm-hmm. on what happens and why. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell us what do y'all think about this story. Yeah. But again, between Von Zant and and this story, I just kept feeling and being drawn to this idea of trauma in the family and how do you work? I, I guess it's the same thing. Things you have to seek self care. You have to talk to a counselor. But I think more more importantly, we have to not make these conversations taboo. Right. Like talking about this, like th- this is a real thing, and saying that this is not. I don't know. I don't know. I just needed to bring that forward. It was on my spirit now. Do you have anything else about like this or family trauma or? <laughs> I think you it's know it's big in our community. Yes, and you have to keep talking about it. You need to go see um you gotta go see seek per- professional help. And knowing that all because one turned you down does not mean there's not others that are willing to help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. I mean in the episode on that. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> all right. But you didn't get that when you're standing yeah. like it is trauma. It's so it, it, it's something going on. It just it's didn't something make sense. deeper than this. It just didn't make sense. And even for the young lady, we talked about kidnap. So can we talk to the woman who thought her only outlet was to kidnap a child? Right. Sis. You stole somebody's baby. Baby? Out the hospital? Like, How did you think that was the... How the hell did he get out the hospital? I'm just thinking of all the young brown babies that are born to teen parents who are looking for folks. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To adopt them. To like, It's people who are willing... And looking for other folks that, that they can sign over their parental rights to to take care of their child. You know what I'm saying? For mm-hmm. Like, it just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. Look, Friday will come with a more upbeat episode. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> don't tease me. Was that too heavy? <laughs> to submit your black love story, go to blacklovematters.com. Uh, to submit a question, question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. Uh, to leave us a comment about anything that we talk about, head on over to the website um, at blacklovematters.com. We got that SoundCloud, and we also got the voicemail, y'all. We love voicemails. Go ahead and keep sending them, 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all on Friday, and remember, love, love is ever evolving. Peace. Peace.